Hi there. Thanks for clicking. This is my first Confessions of a Crap Programmer. And my purpose here is to help anyone who, like me, has plenty of enthusiasm for making 8-bit or even 16-bit games, but doesn't necessarily have the math skills or technical knowledge to find good answers to programming problems. With very few exceptions, my projects for the Sam Coupe always end up being far less playable than I expected, and it's always because I got stuck somewhere and ended up having to just dumb down the gameplay to get the thing finished. There's a few standard Z80 assembly tricks that I've been taught by other coders or from online, but that still doesn't help where the problem is just a basic lack of ability with maths. So I've been having a go at porting Arkanoid 2 to the SAM recently using the graphics from the ST port. This is the current build. It's very early days, so you'll have to excuse a few things. The uh, collision detection's off by a couple of pixels and the shadows on the bricks don't uh, work properly yet, but I've had a lot of fun playing this on the Atari recently and it seemed like a good candidate for a SAM port. The graphics for the ST version were copied directly from the arcade machine by I, by Peter Johnson, who also did the programming for the ST version. To do something like that by I really impresses me. So um, hats off to Peter Johnson, who currently has a company called Soluble Apps, who uh, if you have an iOS device, uh, I would recommend going and checking out his work. I was very interested in working out how to handle the collision uh, because there's also a Game Boy game that I'd like to do a remake for, for the Sam in the future, um, and that has an Arkanoid mini game. So that will definitely happen now, but I was also very interested in finding a solution for the ball movement um, in Arkanoid because I was completely flummoxed a few years ago trying to get Samtona working, um, which was a basic driving game. When I was playing around with the car graphics from Supercars, I reduced the size of the sprites and the number of degrees of rotation, so I had 16 directions. And what I wanted to do was have the car be able to move in 16 possible directions. The problem is, how do you move a sprite at different angles while keeping the speed of the sprite constant? And when I started searching for answers online, I couldn't find any solutions that would be suitable for the SAM at all. It's all trigonometry and calculations and really horrible stuff like that. And I don't want any part of it. Not in my house. So I found an answer that works pretty well. And I thought this could be useful to anyone who struggles with this sort of thing like I do. Um, I'm working in Z80 assembly on the SAM, um, but there's very little programming uh, in this video. So this basic solution would work on anything. The first thing I should say is that this solution relies on using 8.8 .8 fixed point arithmetic, which if you haven't come across it before, you'll find loads of good explanations for online. It sounds painful, but it's actually very simple and it gives you lots of possibilities for moving sprites. I'm just going to explain it very briefly here. What we do is take advantage of the way 16 bit numbers work when you add them together. We only need an 8-bit number for our screen coordinates, and this number will be stored in the upper byte of a 16-bit number. So we'll need two 16-bit numbers, one for the x coord and one for the y. So here is the HL register uh, set to zero, and you can imagine a decimal point between the H and the L. Uh, this is why the H value is the one we'll use for our screen coordinate, because it's on the left-hand side. Of the decimal point. It's not really a decimal point, it's more like a 256 decimal point, by which I mean if we load 256 into another 16 bit register and add it to HL, the result just adds 1 to H, therefore one pixel of movement on screen. If we had added 128, it would have left H set to 0 and the L would be 128. You can consider this the equivalent of moving half a pixel. Add on another 128, and now we've moved a whole pixel. Adding 64 is therefore the equivalent of a quarter of a pixel movement, and at the other extreme, adding 512 would be two pixels of movement. 
and you can create very effective acceleration or deceleration by increasing or decreasing this value that you're adding on. If you alter that value each time around your game loop, you can just do magical things very, very easily. So that's a very basic explanation. And if it didn't make sense, I really suggest looking for a better one online because if there was a top 10 list of useful programming tricks, this would pretty much be in the top three, if not number one. So to move in different angles of direction, we just need to work out the correct velocity values to add to our 16-bit X and Y values. So taking the X velocity values first, I try to think about it logically. If the ball in Arkanoid was moving straight up, then the X velocity must be zero. The same with moving straight down. If the ball is moving fully to the left, then this needs to be whatever value full speed would be. For Arkanoid, I found that 256 was too slow, so I used 512. This value will be negative if moving left and positive for right. From here, all the other values become obvious. The diagonals are halfway between these points, so they must be 256, negative or positive accordingly, and we can do this again to make 16 directions. I haven't got the space to fit any more arrows in here, but you get the picture. So now we can do the same for the Y velocity values. If the ball is moving left or right, the Y velocity will be zero. Up or down will be 512, diagonals 256, and so on. Negative or positive uh, where appropriate. Um, that's it. I like using lookup tables, so I put the values into a table like this. And then it's just a matter of getting them into a movement routine uh, like this, possibly. But that's entirely up to you, or it could be the subject of another video. This video has been a very short example of the sort of thing I could do if I had set up a Patreon account for Wubsoft and I needed to produce some sort of content to entice people to donate more or just to donate at all. Um, I've been very hesitant to do this up until now because I'm still learning how to program, obviously. And I don't really have a catalogue of great games behind me to justify uh, big donations or anything. Um, however, if you're watching this and this is exactly the sort of content that you would like to uh, support, or if you'd like to support my future Sam Coupe or Atari ST projects through something like Patreon, then please let me know in the comments. Thanks again.